I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and this is my January wrap up. So this month I read a lot of electronic books and I felt like I'd barely read anything because my my pile of physical read books was pretty small and it wasn't until I was totting up my totals for the month that I realised I had read 13 books which does feel a little it feels like quite a, a small number for me usually but it's still a good number and I did end the month with four books that I was more than halfway through so there's a really good chance that my February totals will be the opposite and I'll feel that they're far too high and I suppose I'll just go from least favourite that sounds horrible uh, lowest rated that also sounds horrible uh, to highest rated first up is velocity of a secret by violet marsh this was an arc and i gave it one star i don't want to sort of bash the book it just it wasn't for me um this book was about a socialite when world war one was ending he is investigating wartime espionage and aspiring and the mo the majority of the book takes place in uh, the northern Scottish Isles of Orkney and I have friends who will absolutely love this book and I have suggested to them that they might want to give it a read it's just not for me. Moving swiftly on uh, was my two star read the Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This was my in real life book club book for January which we will chat about at the start of February because we're always a month behind and interestingly enough or maybe not that interesting this is actually the second time that my book club has chosen a book that was a Reese Witherspoon book club book and also the second time that I have disliked that book so Maybe Reese Witherspoon and I don't have the same taste in books. Maybe. <laughs> this was a locked room murder mystery set in Switzerland in a spa which has been cut off from the police due to an avalanche and that sounded exactly like the sort of book I would love. But this book had a police officer in it who just kept making strange choices, just really strange choices and her policing just felt it, it didn't gel I didn't I didn't like her style of policing and I just felt that nobody would do that I felt like if this book had been set perhaps 70 years earlier it would have really worked and I would have been able to sort of forgive the sort of mistakes or her attitude towards following the procedures I would probably been able to go with that a bit more. In addition I think that some of the suggested motives would have worked so much better for me. I yeah I think I I gave this a two it's maybe a two and a half I don't think it's a three. I'm very excited to see how the rest of my book club have gotten on with this book. So far it feels like it's been pretty polarising which always makes for a really good discussion. Next up I have a lot of three star reads which is either a really good thing or a really bad thing I suppose because it sort of feels like I had a lot of middling books but I tend to look at a three star as yeah I like I liked it. I liked it enough to round it up from a two and a half. So my first three was An Unwelcome Quest by Scott Mayer which is book three in the Magic 2.0 series, which if you've seen any of my videos, maybe, um, it's one of the series that I'm hoping to finish in 2022. So I'm now three books in and I've got three left to go. And I really like this book. I gave it three, but it's like a high three, but not quite a four, three and a half if half marks were a thing. This book felt like such a welcome return to 
the sort of feelings of the original book, the, the thing that really drew me in, so like the, the silliness and the fun and just magic. The, the original gang end up in an RPG, which was really hard to get my head around at first because first of all, they are in their world that they have entered through computer programming. I don't understand it. And then from that world, they end up in an RPG. Uh, a role playing game, which was very Dungeons and Dragons. I love Dungeons and Dragons, and this world was just trying to do them harm, and it was just so exciting. In classic Magic 2.0 fashion, things start to go wrong, and it just made the story so fun and such an enjoyable read. And the second book in the series. I didn't enjoy quite as much and I feel like this book has got me back on track and I'm really excited to go and read book four which I believe has dragons and I love anything with a dragon. Then I read Call of the Penguins by Hazel Pryor which is the second book in the Away with the Penguin series which is all about Veronica McCready who is an 84? 86? A lady in her 80s, I can't remember exactly how old, and she goes off to be with the penguins. And in this book, she ends up in the Falkland Islands, taking part in a nature documentary, which just felt like such a natural progression from the first book. This book was just full of just heartwarming moments. And I love a book with an older protagonist. I, I suppose I'm just always looking for my, my literary granny. Like the first book, this book had multiple narratives which is something I love in a book and I just really enjoyed getting to spend more time with the characters that I'd previously really grown to enjoy. I didn't enjoy this book as much as the first one but I did really love the first one. Then we had Double Deception by Barbara Angela Keeley. This was an arc and this book was just silly. I just loved the concept of it. It was just ridiculous from the offset. This book had a lot of unexpected spice. I did not expect quite as much but here we are. This book was written in the what I would think is the style of Rocky Flintstone which I think is a huge compliment. It was silly, it was funny, it was completely unbelievable and it just sort of oozed the drama of like the 80s so like it was very dynasty and I don't know if that's because the main character was a Joan Crawford impersonator that I just thought, ah, 80s. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but set in modern time. It was set in modern time. So this was just <laughs> celebrity impersonators get caught up in crime and there's romance and there's uh, organized crime. There was just so much happening in this book and it was so, so silly. I believe, um, so this is the first book in a series so I'm gonna keep my eye out for the next one because it ended on a cliffhanger which I don't really enjoy because I kind of want to know what happens next. Fairy Tales of the Future by Kate Fire. Again this was an arc and this was a collection of short stories which were all sort of almost like fable fairy tales with a sci-fi setting. And I really do enjoy science fiction, so it was really enjoyable to sort of read fairy tales in a setting that I would not normally read them. The thing with short story collections is that there's always going to be a story that you enjoy more than the others, or a few stories that maybe you just don't like quite as much and that's what happened for me with this book. There were a few stories that I absolutely just really enjoyed and I do love a fairy story. The Hiding Place by Jenny Quintana. This was my last arc of the month. There were a lot and I I feel that this book has been incorrectly categorised on Goodreads. It seems to have the category of thriller and it's, it's really not a thriller. This book is all about a family mystery. I don't know if that's a category. It it might be. It surely is. This book is all about a young woman who moves into the building where she was left as a baby, ab abandoned, and she 
didn't really know anything about where she came from and this book was all about her trying to find out her origin story about where she comes from and why she ended up just left in that building and I did really enjoy reading it. So this book was a uh, another book that had uh, multiple narratives which is my weakness in books I just love a multiple narrative I just love multiple narratives and the narratives took place over different periods of time so everything sort of got revealed slowly slowly and then at the end everything came out in both timelines and I really like that the Second Worst Restaurant in France by Alexander McCall Smith. This was one of my reading Scottish books. So I do talk about it in my reading Scottish wrap up video. So I'll just talk a little bit about it. This book is all about Paul who's a culinary writer and he ends up going to France in order to write his next book and he's staying with his cousin Chloe and while he's trying to write his book he just ends up getting caught up in hijinks. I just absolutely loved his cousin. I found her so exciting as a character and yeah I'm at danger of rambling so I'm gonna move on. Well now I've got my four star books. I'm gonna start with a reread. I reread Luck and Booth by Jenny Fagan which was a uh, reread for the Scottish Book Club. I read this book in November and I thought I missed the point and I did miss the point and I talk about this book again in my Reading Scottish wrap up as well so I don't want to drone on for too long but this book was just really well thought out and well executed. It's about a building in Edinburgh cursed by the devil's daughter and it's told over a span of a hundred years from different points of view. I'm a sucker for a multiple narrative. This book was creepy. It was so creepy. And while reading this for the second time, I noticed a lot of links between the chapters that I hadn't noticed before. And I think that I'm definitely going to read this again because it feels like it's going to be the kind of book that the more you read it, the more you get out of it. Then I had another book club book. This time it was for the Read Christie 2022 book challenge, reading challenge. I'm not 100% sure what it's called, but uh, I read The Man in the Brown Suit by Agatha Christie. I, this is a rare Agatha Christie book that I don't think I've read. I have read the majority of Agatha Christie books, but this one just, I didn't get around to reading this one before now. And this book is about Anne who witnesses a man falling onto some live train tracks and then ends up on a luxury liner going off to South Africa on a hunch. This was absolutely thrilling. It was such an enjoyable read. The whole idea of just using your life savings to go off chasing a story is just something that's so exciting to read about. I could, I would never do that in life. But I will happily read about it. This book has a, a mystery character of the Colonel and nobody knows who he is and I guessed, I kept guessing and getting it wrong. I love that I never guess the twist in an Agatha Christie book. I think that's what just makes them so exciting for me. My final book club book of the month was for my real life book club. The club that I actually go outside and meet people for and that was Scabby Queen by Kirsten Innes. I've mentioned this book on my Reading Scottish wrap up so I don't want to go on too much about it. Uh, this story was all about Cleo and told through the eyes of people who knew her and cared about her and it was just such a raw an emotional book. It was full of passion and emotion and it was a very emotional and quite gritty read. I really enjoyed it uh, but it wasn't warm and fluffy at all which is what I like in a book. My final four star was uh, The Secrets of the Last Merfolk by Lindsay Littleton. This was a middle grade book and I don't read a lot of middle grade books. I'm 
Not sure why, because it was utterly charming and heartwarming. And I think I will read more because I like reading things that are charming and heartwarming. This book was all about two new friends who end up going on an adventure to save the merfolk. And it was so exciting and it was lovely just reading a nice adventure story. While this was a middle grade book and I'm very far from being middle grade, I got a lot out of this book and I really enjoyed the overall message of just standing up and doing the right thing. I only had one five star read in January and what a five star it was. It was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. And I, I struggle to put into words just how much I love this book. This book is about Wallace who finds himself no longer alive and he ends up at Karen's Crossing which is a tea shop and that is where spirits go in order to then pass over to whatever comes next. I loved this book. I did not expect this book to be quite as heartwarming as it was and it was so heartwarming and despite this book being about a ghost who is getting ready to pass on, I just found this book to be so hopeful and I loved all of the main characters in this book. I absolutely love them, even the dog. And I'm a crazy cat lady. I don't usually find myself loving a dog character, but here I was absolutely loving that dog. This was such a powerful and emotional read uh, for me. I cried hysterically almost for about the last three chapters of this book, maybe the last four. I did cry quite easily, but I was an emotional wreck. I love this book. I have recommended this book to everybody. Uh, it is without a doubt, it's my book recommendation of the month that nobody ever asks for, but I do give. <laughs> I read The House in the Cerulean Sea last year and that book stuck with me for the whole year. And I think that that's what this book is gonna do. And I think that TJ Klune is just amazing. I think that they're now definitely one of my auto buy authors. I will buy anything that they write because I love a heartwarming read with amazing characters and a beautiful storyline and just joyful reading full of hope and whimsy. So that's my wrap up for January. It, going through all the books it's been it's been a good month so I'm really excited to see what I get through next month. It is a shorter month but I do have some time off work, so who knows? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.